Hi friends and welcome back to our Flinch Squad circuit. We have finished the Sun series. I hope you enjoyed all the content from that. If you missed any of the Sun series and you want to go back and check that out before you get into this Moon series, immerse yourself in this new circuit, then you can go back up here and check out the Sun series, check out all the matches, the review episodes that we do. But these are going to be review episodes that we're going to be doing every single week, so they'll be dropping on a Thursday, Friday, every week, covering the matches from the previous week. We're going to kick into it today with week one matches and it's going to be covering all of the players we've got 16 players now in the moon series going forward so going to be really exciting we've got a real mix of new players and old players that we're very familiar with from that sun series obviously will took the sun series he was the champion there with nigel hot on his heels so nigel has got a lot to prove but with all the new players coming in it's not going to be easy for any of these players to take the championship so it's going to be extremely amazing to follow their their progress throughout this tournament and see who finishes on top but i'm just going to pull up now the week one pairings and uh, go through some of the players here for you so kicking off this week and into this moon series are urine who was a sun series player we've got porygon j who's a newcomer into the moon series we've got worm's eye obviously we've mentioned before second place in the sun series another new player bevon coming into the moon series seeing what he can do in this circuit we've got will r our current sun series champion and then crim is another new player to this moon series we've got johnny hacks an old favorite from the sun series we've got zen brand new to the moon series we've got Stu, another old favorite from the sun series shared brand new player to the moon series alex one two three brand new player going up against poker marty who is another player from our sun series circuit who had an incredible start to the sun series so see if we can continue and replicate that going into the moon series then we've got our old fan favorite pinko vgc coming in from the sun series looking forward to seeing what he does this season and then we've got luigi another new player that we'd like to welcome to the moon series and then finishing off with hectic preston who again was a third place player from the sun series uh, going up against imagi who's our new player to the moon series and a big threat to this circuit so going to be interesting to see how these players get into it today and uh, without further ado guys let's just get into these matches so we're kicking off the series with Alex versus Poker Marty we're going into it straight away I have sped the matches up so we can fit everything in so let me know what you think of the format going into this week we're gonna see Smeagol and Xerneas lead off for Alex and the Xerneas and Amoongus lead off for Marty so straight away we see the Xerneas switch out and Marty's end Lunala come in as Alex's Xerneas goes straight for that Geomancy Smeagol is sitting in the wake, ready to throw a lovely kiss, which misses. And the Amoongus takes advantage of that, going for the spore onto the Smeagol. We're going to see a moody boost come out from the Smeagol. The evasiveness falls there. The Xerneas now protecting on Alex's side of the field as the Lunala goes for that psych up. That is crazy. So the psych up there taking advantage of those stat boosts. Lunala still got its shadow shield intact, and this Amoongus really threatening the opposing side of the field now with potential spores. We're going to see a protect that'll come out from the Lunala. I don't want to take any damage as the Amoongus you would imagine probably oh goes actually for the KS Mog not the Spore getting rid of those boosts big advantage there for Marty on this side of the field as you see a Rage Powder come out from the Amoongus side shock into the Smeagol and uh, we are going to see Smeagol go down to its focus sash another Geomancy coming out from the, the Xerneas it's been denied once it's going for it again not wanting to mess around going for that two turn Geomancy as a follow me comes out from the Smeagol after it wakes up Psyshock coming out going to take it down and opens the door for the Amoongus to go for the spore all of the clear smog again after this Geomancy boost comes out so we are going to see the Xerneas get that Geomancy off again spore coming up from the Amoongus going to take it and shut it down as the Groudon comes in but this Lunala now is so, so threatening on Marty's side of the field. It's got those Geomancy boosts. We're going to see a Ghost DMZ, but we're going to have to cut this out because of issues with the recording, obviously, because of that clear smog coming out. Going to take away all those boosts from Xerneas as Stack Attacker hits the field, and uh, that is game one. So we are going into game two. Marty 1 0 up going into this second game as we see Alex adjust his leads, bringing out the Stack Attacker, the ground on, and Marty going with the Lunala and the Mungus again. So Stack Attacker going to come out. Smeagol going to be returning to the field as we see a Z move come out from this Lunala but it is going to be into that Smeagol not affected really nice switch there from Alex as he unleashes the tectonic rage from this Groudon 
and this will be probably into oh wow it's into the Moongus nice so gonna remove that from the field and that was such a big devastating player for Marty in game one with that going down so early in this game it's all up for grabs now Alex making a really nice play getting rid of that support option from Marty's side of the field I'm gonna see Xerneas now hit the field Smeagol going for a spiky shield just to protect itself as Groudon protects as well and side shock just hitting into these protects as the moody boost comes out evasiveness boost which is not what marty wants to see i'm sure Groudon switching out for stack attacker and follow me coming out to protect it from this smeagol as the geomancy comes from the xernia is the psych up coming as well from this lunala as the xernia gets a one turn power herb boost we are going to see Lunala go for that psych up and take full advantage to boost the Pokemon on Marty's side of the field. Things looking pretty tough now for Alex as we see this Smeagol go for that follow me. Is this evasion boost going to come in handy? We're going to see a dazzling gleam come out from the Xerneas here and now evasiveness boosts there so the Smeagol going down. Trick Room coming out for the Stack Attacker, now putting itself in a really nice place, especially with this Groudon coming out onto the field now, which will threaten both targets as we see the Gyro Ball come out into the Lunala break, that Shadow Shield do a bit of chip damage, revealing the Life Orb, and the Precipice Blade's missing as a Moongeist Beam comes out, and it is going to be into the Stack Attacker, but doesn't actually pick up the Knockout, which is crazy strong. Another Gyro Ball, this time into the Xerneas, going to pick up the Knockout, and the Beast Boost come in with another bit of chip damage from the that life orbed gyro ball as the precipice blades comes out picks up the knockout and alex flipping the tables bringing everything right back in his favor with this trick room up now Moi doesn't look like he's got any option to come back just forfeiting there with the tapa cork where his only pokemon left on the field now we're going to see pokemon come out from alex's side of the field the xerneas the incineral uh, the intimidate shuffle there onto both of these special attackers on marty's side of the field and moongus straight away switching out ludicolo coming in for him Xerneas protecting here as the Incineral goes for a fake out, Psyshock just into that Xerneas this time around as the Faker comes out into Incineral, Psyshock again into that Xerneas doing good damage, Moonblast returning into the Ludicolo as the Incineral flinches from that fake out, so Xerneas retreating for later as Groudon hits the field, Groudon going to come and bring the sun with it, Ludicolo though going to retreat as Amoongus comes in and Lunala just protecting this turn just to create a little bit more room, board positioning that Amoongus with its redirection support but not staying in, going to switch straight out for the Ludicolo as Gaussium Z comes out into the Groudon but it actually hangs on and it, Groudon actually hangs on and has the chance to come back with the Groudium Z and it's going to be straight into that Lunala. Lunala still has its Shadow Shield intact so is able to take that but with a double up from the Incineroar's Flare Blitz as well enough to take it down. Crazy play, crazy play. Now losing a big Pokemon, Xerneas comes in in place for Marty as Incineroar switches out for the Stack Attacker. Fake out coming out into that Stack Attacker slot and a Geomancy boost from Marty's Xerneas here. So this is all going down to the wire now as we see the Xerneas boost up here. Who is going to take this game three as Groudon goes for that big Precipice Blades, does hit and takes the Ludi down to 19 health. Stack Attacker switching straight out, Xerneas coming in for Alex going to be able to possibly create some room for the stack attacker to do some damage late game but Groudon and stack attacker going down scald failing as Incineroar comes in it has got the access to the fake out it can help the stack attacker set up this trick room that it needs so desperately now and uh, Ludi going to switch out and Moong is going to come in protect from the Xerneas coming out and the Incineroar going for the fake out and there's that trick room from the stack attacker and Moong is going to be able to provide some good support here especially in the trick room going for that rage powder gonna distract everything as a gyro ball comes in still does a lot of damage with a flare blitz and a gyro ball coming in to that Amoongus you would feel there that Marty should have went for the spore at least into that stack attacker to shut it down take advantage of that and maybe went for a Moonblast into the Incineroar especially with the sun ending that previous turn now we're going to see stack attacker go for a wide guard I'm going to see a fake up from the Ludi into that stack attacker as Incineroar goes for this flare blitz it is enough to pick up the Ludicolo leaving this Xerneas all by itself in a trick room not able to do anything that doesn't being blocked by the stack attacker's wide guard as it protects trying to stall out this trick room now it's its only hope it's its only way around this it needs one more protect i think to get through this but it does fail as the gyro ball comes out from alex's stack attacker and picks up the win so i think the big thing there was for us to just highlight 
how important it was for Marty to maybe go for the spore rather than the rage powder there. You can see the logic of why he's went for that, but at the same time, I feel you have to shut down a stack attacker. Stop its wide guards, stop its gyroballs. They're the big things that are really threatening you right there. But very well played to both players. A great set for us to kick off with today, and we will get into the next one, which is going to be Stu versus Shade and Light being Shade's username. So we're going to see Stu with Ivelto. We're going to see Shade lead off with the Lunala and Tapakoko as Stu leads off with Yveltal and Tapakoko. So Tapakoko is all over the place in this one to kick us off today. Yveltal going to protect turn 1 from that Tapakoko threat as a wild charge comes out from Shade and the Volt Switch coming out from Stu into that Lunala, breaking the Shadow Shield and getting ground on onto the field. Very nice play here from Stu to set himself up with the Sun early on as we see a Z move come out from Shade. It is going to be the Lunala signature Z move, not very effective, is into that Yveltal slot, predicting probably a switch here as a Volt which this time comes out from the Tapu Koko on Shade's side. The Serena hitting the field as a knockoff into that Lunala, picks up the knockoff into that slot and a Precipice Blade's gonna come in and do decent damage to the Serena as we see it open the field for Kyogre to come in now. Groudon feeling very threatened. Andy Veltal as well, depending on this Kyogre build as Groudon switches up for Venusaur. We see a feint from the Serena into the Eveltal. It is a scarfed Kyogre. It is gonna pick up the knockout onto the Eveltal. Do very big damage to this Venusaur as it leaves the the door now open for the Groudon to come back in in this mad weather war. We're going to see Kyogre switch out, Tapu Koko going to come back in, hit the field as we see Groudon straight away switch out. Nice play there from Stu, predicting that switch out from the Kyogre because of the sun. Sludge Bomb into that Serena, picking up the knockout, giving way for the Kyogre to come back in with its rain once again. We're going to see Venusaur go out for the Groudon. The sun is back on the field. This is a real weather war here. It's a revolving door of Pokemon as we see Tapu Koko protect from the Origin Pulse. It is going to hit into the ground on big damage sky drop going to go into the opposing type of cover trying to get it off the field as we see ground go for another protect here another origin post come out not going to hit the ground on this time take the tapu koko down just be about 50 percent health as we see a z move come out from stew's tapu koko and it is going to be into that kyo you've got to imagine and this will be able to pick up the one hit kill guaranteed even out of the electric terrain and paving the way for stew to pick up game one here nature's madness coming out from the tapu koko shade just looking for as much information as possible going into game two just not wanting to just hit that forfeit button very smart here as the precipice blades comes out from stew picking up the win. Very nice win there for Stu and go straight into game two. We're gonna see Venusaur Groudon come out for Stu here. As we see Lunala Tapakoko come out for Shade, we're gonna see the electric terrain come up, denies those sleep powders that are so free for Stu to throw out with that chlorophyll ability on the Venusaur. We're gonna see Sludge Bomb come out straight away from Venusaur into the Tapakoko, which takes it quite nicely considering it's a super effective attack. Tailwind coming out from Lunala. Precipice Blades now coming out from the Groudon. Does miss the Lunala though and this now with the Tailwind up does pave the way. Kyogre to come in, put a lot of pressure on Stu's side of the field. Okay, the Groudon switches off with the Tapu Koko. Venusaur protecting here, Water Spout coming out. It's got to be enough. You've got to think to take down this Tapu Koko, which it is, which now opens the door for the Groudon to come back, get its sun back in. But we're not going to see that. We're going to see Valtel come back onto the field this turn and Kyogre switch out for the Serena. Going to prevent any sucker punches or priority attacks from that Valtel as the Venusaur switches out for the Groudon, the Sun coming back up and a Z move coming out from this Lunala. Which slot is it going to be into this time? Going to see it into the Groudon this time, taking a big critical hit and knocking it out as a knockoff comes into the Serena. But now you've got to think that Shade has a little bit of an advantage here with that Kyogre lying in wait in the back. Side shot coming in taking Stu's resources down to one Pokemon with just that Ivelto out on the field. It does take out the Lunala, but now with the Kyogre coming out onto the field, it is scarfed. It is going to be able to probably outdo this Ivelto, especially with that Serena support. We've got a help in hand. There's nothing you can do as a water spout comes out in the rain. Enough to take down the Ivelto. Tying up the match, taking it to 1-1. So who will come out victorious in game three and take the set? Ivelto Incineroar coming out for Stu as we see Lunala and Tapu Koko come out for shade here so Intimidate coming out, not really going to affect the shade side of the field, but he does have that fake out utility. We are going to see Veltal just go for that protect turn one from the Tapu Koko. No fake out come out, I don't think, from this Incineroar as a wild charge into the Veltal protect and a U turn into that Lunala. Bit of a dead turn there. So you see a wild charge straight away into that Veltal. The Intimidate there really helping it out as a knockoff comes into the Lunala, but it does survive because of that Shadow Shield. Huge, huge turn as the Tailwind gets set up from the Lunala and a U turn coming out from Incineroar paves the way for Venus 
Venusaur to hit the field as Serena comes out for Shade. Tapu Koko is threatening that Evelto, you've got to see it switch out, Incineroar now hitting the field, going to take another round of Intimidate support as Voltwitch comes up from Tapu Koko, going to Togar go out and the Kyogre going to hit the field, bring the rain, disrupt that weather and straight away the Kyogre going to be in a really dominating position as we see a U-turn from the Serena, nice play as the Tapu Koko comes back in as a Sludge Bomb comes out, picks up the knockout onto the Tapu Koko and leaving Shade with just his Serena and the Kyogre but the Incineroar Sinor cannot fake out here because of that Queenly Majesty ability. So switches out the Groudon coming in. Faint coming out into the Venusaur. As a water spot comes out into the sun. It is dampened because of that sun as a grass knot into the Kyogre. Is able to pick up the knockout. That's a huge turn there for Stu. You'd think sometimes that you would see the Kyogre probably be able to survive that. But big player. And then we do see the forfeit. So very good game to both players. Stu taking a big win there game one. A really nice way for us to get into to that second game things are heating up now we're going to go on to our third match today and it is going to be our reigning champ will r dempsey versus crim our new player coming into the circuit so we're going to see this one and will is piloting a team of the x and y build we're going to see will lead off with the tapu finney here as crim leads off with crobat in cineral Taunt comes out from the Crowback, going to potentially stop any sort of Tailwind support from that Eveltal and a knockoff coming out into the Eveltal as well, getting rid of that Assault Vest. Taunt coming out now into the Tapu Fini that's just set up that light screen as another foul player into the Crowback here, taking it down and then Icy Wind as well, reducing the speed stat on both Pokemon, but not quite knocking out that Crowback now. Incineroar has got the knockoff onto both Pokemon on Will side of the field getting rid of that assault vest and also the berry on the Tapu Fini here. So doing some work as the Crobat goes down after setting up a tailwind. Nature's Madness coming out into the Incineroar doing some really nice damage as a Flare Blitz in return to the Eveltal taking it down below 50% health with the Sogaleo now hitting the field in the tailwind. Very threatening as Cortana comes in for that Eveltal. Cinema switching out now for Serena. I'm gonna see the Sun Seal strike from this Sogaleo. Where's it gonna be into? Is it gonna be into the yeah, into that Cortana slot? Still doing a lot of damage and revealing the life orb as a nature's madness comes out from the Tapu Fini and the taunt wearing off Cortana. Switching out straight away into that Xerneas as the Tapu Fini switches out for the Eveltal as well. It's a complete change of field for Will side of the field as a superpower comes into that Xerneas slot now. Not doing very much to that. Xerneas as a power web comes in to the Eveltal again, not doing too much damage there, but a faint this time around coming into the Xerneas, detecting maybe a protect there, but not hitting through it. So Sun Seal Strike comes in to pick up the knockout and take down the Xerneas as the Eveltal is left free to do anything and take down that Sogaleo. I don't think the critical hit matters there too much as the Tailwind pitters out. Tapu Fini able to come back and Incineroar going to hit the field again. Got access to that fake out but which one is it going to go for? Eveltal has got the Assault Vest. It cannot protect here on Will's side of the field but it does just retreat as Cortana hits the field. Fake out coming into that slot and a heal pulse coming out from the Tapu Fini. Huge play putting that Cortana back to full health as a power whip comes out. Takes down the Tapu Fini which opens it on now for Eveltal to come back in. Do some big damage to that Serena and Cortana in a place to pick up the knockout onto this Incineroar with Sacred Sword. We are seeing that here the Incineroar is taken out and we are going to see Beast Boost in attack and an Oblivion Wing to the Serena not taking it out but putting it in a nice position Eveltal to pick up the knockout here and we are going straight into game two so we'll take an early lead here we're going to see Krim come out with the same lead of Incineroar and Crobat again as Will with his Tapu Fini and Eveltal here so Intimidates all around coming out, fake out into the Avalto this time, taunt into that type of thing. You're going to prevent the light screen this turn as an icy wind comes out this turn. Really nice play and detect there from Will, so with the icy wind speed control. And we are going to see the Super Fang this time come out into that type of thing. He takes some big damage as a foul player returns into the Crobat. Nature's Madness avoids the Incineroar as a knockoff comes out and takes away the Assault Vest for the Eveltal. Another Super Fang this time into the Eveltal as a Oblivion Wing comes out into the Incineroar. Going to do a bit of chip damage and get a nice bit of health back as another Icy Wind comes into that Crobat slot. So we're going to see Crobat now going to be under speeding everything after this next turn as Incineroar procs the Citrus Berry onto that Tapu Fini with the U-turn. Paving the way for the Kyogre to come into the field and set the rain up. So 
Taunt wearing off as well on the finish. Short lived taunt as the Kyogre switches straight back out for that Incineroar. Another cycle of Intimidate onto this side of the field as a Sucker Punch comes out into that Kyogre slot with another Icy Wind. Gonna be enough to take down the Crobat here and I'll probably open the door for the Kyogre to come back in and now with that fake out support can do a lot of damage to what's on Will's side of the field. Serena gonna come in now and a water spout coming out from the Kyogre into the Velto picks up the knockout does decent damage to that type of Finny as it returns with an icy wind onto both of these targets. Now we're going to see Cartana come in really threatening this Kyogre now, especially after that Icy Wind. It doesn't want to stick around. Incineroar going to hit the field, get that Intimidate, all important Intimidate onto the Cartana as Tailwind is set up from the Cartana. Really nice reveal there as Light Screen there coming out to help bolster those defenses on Will's side of the field. Power Whip going to be enough to take down the Tepa Finny now, but it feels like it's done its job as Xerneas hits the field for Will. And it will it have access and go for that Geomancy here. We are going to see the Cartana just protect this turn as Incineroar goes for a fake out into the Xerneas. The rain does stop unfortunate for Krim here as a Sacred Sword comes out. Not enough to pick up the knockout onto the Incineroar. Just procking in an Ayapa Berry as a Moonblast doubling in on that slot. Again the Incineroar sticking around. The Water Spout coming out. Taking these down. The Flare Blitz coming out into the Xerneas slot. Not enough to take it down. You've got to think you want to go for the Cartana there. But the Incineroar now switching out. Serena going to hit the field again. Leaf Blade this time into the Kyogre. Going to pick up a And it does leave Xerneas in a position to throw out Moonblast. I'll go for that. It will picking his moment to go for it. And now it feels like the match is going to be a little bit too far. For Krim to come back from with this Geomancy Xerneas Beast boosted Cartana around the field. The Incineroar going to come in. It's got access to Fake Out. But it's an easy double protect this turn. Stall this out. But you've got to worry about Faint as well from your opposing Serena. As we see a Moonblast into that Serena. Pick up the knockout. Fake Out into the Cartana. Going to stop it moving this turn. As the light screen does pass. And the Moonblast here to finish up the Incineroar. Really nice game. And good game to both players here as we are going straight into our next game Nigel versus Bevan so we're going to kick off here Nigel going to lead off with that illustrious lead Kyogre Ludicolo as Bevan brings out the Blaziken and Evelto really interesting lead here from Bevan so yeah it's going to switch out straight away Superior going to hit the field in place of it as Evelto goes for a protect this first turn to burn the fake out from that Ludicolo as a water spout is followed up from this Kyogre and does really big damage to that superior. Such a powerful attack from the Kyogre. Ice Beam gonna come out from the Ludicolo, pick up the knockout onto that superior and a water spout single target into the Evelto gonna be enough to pick up. Not looking so great for Bebum right now. This Kyogre is putting on so much pressure with this Ludicolo lead. Blaziken gonna go for that Protect turn one as we see a Waterium Z come out unleashed from this Ludicolo. Where is it gonna be into? Is it gonna be into that Xerneas slot doing huge damage? Not enough to pick up the knockout, but Choice Scarfed Kyogre gonna be enough to clean up after that Ludicolo. Just leaving this poor Blaziken on the field in the rain and Nigel taking game one. So getting into game two, we're gonna see that same lead from Nigel here as Bevan switches it up with the Raichu and the Superior here. See the Fake Out coming out into the Superior as Fake Out comes out from the Raichu stopping both the other Pokemon moving. I'm gonna see Superior just go for a Protect here. As you see an Ice Beam into it from that Ludicolo again, followed up by a Water Spout. Gonna be doing big damage, but takes Raichu down to its Focus Sash. Electro Web coming out, really nice option here from Bevan's side of the field, lowering the speed on Nigel's side. I'm gonna see Kyogre now change its board position and Duskman and Crossman hit the field as a Leaf Storm comes out into the Lugo Colo. Contrary boost coming out with that and a Thunderbolt from the Raichu. Ice Beam onto that Superior. And Tapu Lele now hitting the field, bringing the psychic terrain and boosting the power of that Dustman Necrozma. As a taunt comes out onto the Dustman Necrozma with a Thunderbolt coming out into the Tapu Lele. Sunsteel Strike going to be firing off from this Dustman Necrozma into the Superior. Is enough to pick up the knockout, taking one Pokemon down, but Blaziken now hitting the field. The rain isn't helping Blaziken at all with its fire typing as another Thunderbolt comes into the Raichu slot. As we see the Lele outspeed and pick up the knockout straight away onto that Blaziken. A Photon Geyser from the Dustman Necrozma pick up the KO, just leaving that Xerneas in front of a Dustman Necrozma. Which is a worst case scenario, but I just feel 
so bad because Bevan just doesn't seem to have a really good way around this Ludicolo Kyogre lead. He did very well in adjusting going into game two, but then when you've got a Dustman and the Cosmos staring down at Xerneas as well, it just makes things so difficult to deal with. Is the Kyogre now going to come back in for Nigel and be able to just clean up pretty easily? And we do see the, the end of that match there. So good game to both players. Really nice to see Nigel off to a good start again. And Bevan bringing all the tricks, so it's going to be exciting to see what he does for the rest of this series going to be really great to see how he progresses and what else he brings to this format going to be very oh, a fan favorite i feel going into the rest of the circuit so we're going into our next game it is going to be jay versus urine and we're going to see jay with the clefairy dustman the crossbow kyoga incineroar against urine with that xerneas incineroar groudon and tapu finny so he leads off with incineroar and xerneas classic lead very strong as Jay leads off with the Clefairy and the Dustman and Crossma. Now that Follow Me is going to be a very problematic to help get this Trick Room set up. That's going to be the prerogative here. We see Double Protect just to burn the Fake out from the Incineroar as a Dazzling Gleam comes out. No Geomancy boost here. Very smart from Yorai. So you see that Xerneas retreating and Tapu Finny hitting the field. Now I'm going to get the Misty Terrain up and just keep that Xerneas in the back for later as a Follow Me comes out from this Clefairy. U turn from the Incineroar. Going to retreat out of here. Make sure it's got that Intimidate to cycle again. And his Groudon hits the field as the Trick Room gets set up. That Groudon threatening the Dustman across him so heavily here. See Clefairy switch out and Incineroar hit the field. Cycle that Intimidate onto the Groudon. Pressure with that Fake Out next turn as Groudon not sticking around. Just going to get that Intimidate in again with the Incineroar. Reduce the attack power of the Dustman across him even further as a Light Screen gets set up from the Tapu Fini. Going to see the Tapu Fini now switch out again for this Groudon. See a Fake Out from Jay's Incineroar and a Sunsteel strike into the ground but with those two intimidates it's finding it very difficult to get any damage off gonna switch out now get rid of those intimidates as the clefairy comes in and you're doing a really nice job here of burning out these trick room turns as Kyogre is pivoted in from that u-turn from the incineral and gets the rain up on the field putting Jay in a very nice position in front of this ground on going into turn Four. We are going to see the Groudium Z come out from the ground on. Does it catch the Kyogre? Does it catch the Kyogre? Tectonic Rage coming out, but it's into the Clefairy and can Clefairy take this attack? It is enough. It is enough. It hangs on barely. Tables turn. Jay in a really nice position. Got this help in hand. Kyogre gonna see the protect from the Xerneas as Water Spout just comes out and does nice damage to the Tapu Fini. Dimensions turn back to normal though. Tapu Fini switching right back out and Groudon coming in just to make sure that Sun is up on the field as we are going to see another helping hand from this Clefairy boosting this Kyogre as a Dazzling Gleam comes out. Picks up the knockout onto the Clefairy doing good damage to this Kyogre as a Scald comes out in the Sun though not enough damage. Going to pick up the burn on the Xerneas and that light screen coming is so handy for Urine. So such a good technical move to use in this match. Xerneas switching out for Urine as Tapu Fini comes back onto the field, creating that misty terrain back onto the battlefield. As we see, a Waterium Z from this Kyogre is going to be powering up with that Z Crystal, but in the sun, it's not going to be hitting as hard. Got to imagine it's going to be into that Groudon slot. Can it be enough to pick up the knockout? No, Groudon actually survives and is able to hang on for another two turn as we see a I don't know what we see from Incineroar coming out I can't see because the battle's all glitchy does mean the Crossman gonna come in now and Tapu Fini goes for that he all important heal pulse able to get it onto the ground on keeping it in play as a precipice blades comes out does do big damage to the Necrozma in a bad place this next turn as Incineroar comes back onto the field cycling these intimidates onto the Dustman Necrozma as the protect comes out and precipice blades you gotta hope for a miss if you're Jay but it's not gonna miss and it is oh the Kyogre actually hangs on these calculations are crazy as the Skull comes out into the ground on able to hang on and uh, Incineroar coming in now to cycle this intimidate again onto the ground on if hopefully that does mean the Cosmo for later in the game is a fake out comes out into the Kyogre and a fire punch into that Incineroar able to take it quite nicely so nice switch there from Jay we see the Tapu Fini switch out for the Incineroar gonna see a fake out now from this Incineroar into the ground on here as a heal pulse this next turn comes out from the Tapu Fini we see that Urine is able to get this Geomancy up and whittle away Jay's end of the field. We are able to see he does manage to take game one with a Dazzling Gleam and um, take game one, take that lead in 1-0. Going into game two now, we're going to see 
Yorin come out with the Incineroar Groudon this time as the Kyogre and the Ludicolo come out for Jez. We see the rain put up onto the field this turn one indicating the Kyogre is slower but maybe a speed tie here as we see the Kyogre switch straight out for the Zapdos. Going to be immune to any ground type attacks as the Tapu Fini comes in for this Incineroar getting the Misty Terrain onto the field. Scrydon just goes for a protect this turn from any water type attacks or grass knots from this Ludicolo. as Groudon switches out into Xerneas. As we see a Thunderbolt come in from the Zapdos into the Tapu Fini is able to take it and set up that all important light screen for Yorin going into the latter parts of this game as we see a Grass Knot again chipping away at this Tapu Fini just wanting to get rid of it as the Xerneas sets up this Geomancy here again procking the Power Herb getting these boosts and what is the Zapdos going to do in this turn we are going to see a Tailwind from the Zapdos match that speed boost from the Geomancy as an Icy Wind comes out to negate some of that Tailwind boost that this side of Jay's field has already got we're gonna see it doesn't gleam now come out from the Xerneas both Pokemon able to just hang on as a proxy a Guadberry on the Zapdos Skull coming out and a Thunderbolt but just because of these Geomancy boosts and the light screen it's just not gonna be able to take any damage and not get enough damage output as the Dazzling Gleam and this match is slowly slipping away from Jay. This Geomancy Xerneas is doing all the work as a heal pulse comes out make sure that all that damage is taken away and Yorin sitting in an amazing position as the Kyogre and the Dustman Necrozma come in for Jay. Dustman Necrozma now putting on a lot of pressure onto this Xerneas as we see the Tapu Fini switch out for the Incineroar. Looking like Jay will probably want to try and sack this in cinema to give an opening for this Groudon to come in with a Moonblast coming into the Kyogre. But with this light screen up, it's still probably not going to be enough to take down the Xerneas. Where is it into? It's into this Xerneas slot as we see it do oh, minimal damage because of that light screen and the Geomancy boost stack on top of it with the Sunsteel Strike. Coming into the Incineroar here as the light screen now does wear off. Fake out coming out from the Incineroar into that uh, Dustman Necrozma as a Dazzling Gleam is enough to pick up the knockout on the Kyogre. And the Necrozma is the only thing left as the Groudon comes in for Urine, setting up the sun, getting rid of that rain. And we are going to see a Moonblast from the Xerneas doing big damage, setting up that knockout onto it the next turn as a Sunsteel Strike comes up. Can get the Constellation KO onto this Xerneas, but no, not quite enough as it hangs on. Just hanging on as a Moonblast comes out again. Critical hit picks up the win, and Urine taking a early 2 0 win in this circuit. So, really nice match there, back and forth. Some crazy weather wars, but really well played from both opponents there. And we will go on to our next game, which is Pinko VGC, fan favorite, against Luigi, a new player into this Moon series. So, Pinko lead off with Duskman, Necrozma and Incineroar to try and get this Trick Room up against Eveltal and Tapu Fini. We are going to see the Mr. Terrain hit the field once again for Luigi as we do see an Intimidate come out onto both of his targets. Eveltal going to switch out straight away and Amoongus hit the field. We're going to see the Fake Out into that slot and a Nature's Madness come out into the Duskman, Necrozma and just get some big damage onto it as a Citrus Berry activates on the Duskman, Necrozma getting some health back as it sets up this Trick Room and paves the way for Pinko to start doing some big disruption early on in this game and Moongus going to switch out for that Eveltal as Lorantis comes on to the field now for Pinko as a flare bit into that Eveltal slot very nice play as the Nature's Madness misses into that Lorantis superpower going to start coming out from this Lorantis boosting with that Contra ability as the Incineroar U-turns out and Tapu Lele hits the field now bringing that Psychic Terrain overwriting the Misty Terrain as a Heal Pulse comes out from the Tapu Fini and an Oblivion Wing as well well into that Lorantis slot doing big damage healing up all of its health but proccing one of those 50% berries the figgy berry on the right is getting all of its health back now Tapu Fini switching out Amoongus hitting the field I'm gonna see a leaf blade come out into that slot Amoongus sapping that up so nicely as a snarl comes out boosting that Lorantis special attack reducing the special attack on the Lele and a Moonblast coming out 
the protect coming out from the Lele now as a rage powder, not a spore from the Zamungus. Superpower gonna come out from the Lorantis, ignoring that rage powder into the Aveltal. Not quite enough. The Oblivion Wing though is enough in return to pick up the knockout and restore some of that health to the Aveltal as the dimensions turn back to normal as the Incineroar hits the field. Gonna be able to fake out that Aveltal because it's not on the ground. As we see the Aveltal switch out, Tepu Fini come in to overwrite the terrain, take away any advantage that Tepu Lele has with it. Zamungus so again switching out and the Xerneas now hitting the field for Luigi. So Fake Out comes out into the Tepu Fini. Psy Shock into that Xerneas but that's not really helping out as the Life Orb is revealed on that Tepu Lele. We are going to see a Xerneas Geomancy. One turn power boost. Here we go, Luigi setting up the field. What can Pinko do to come back? Another Psy Shock into that Xerneas slot. As a heal pulse comes back and undoes all the work. Pinko has done, but a Snarl coming out. Pinko coming back with some real text here to shut down that Xerneas. Doesn't Gleam going to come out? It is going to be enough to pick up the Tapu Lele. Incineroar able to hang on, but another. We need to remove the Tapu Fini with that heal pulse. Snarl coming out, doing lots of work here for Pinko with that Incineroar. Now Dustman Necrozma sitting on the field has a really nice position here. Moonblast coming out into this slot, not doing very much damage. Nature's Madness into the Dustman Necrozma, not going to be enough. Flare Blitz into the Tapu Fini and we are going to see a Trick Room set up from this Dustman Necrozma setting the scene now, setting it up, able to deal with that Xerneas as Amoongus now hits the field again. Xerneas going for a Protect this turn as a Sunsteel Strike, not going into that slot to tech the switch maybe and targeting that Amoongus with another Snarl coming out from the Incineroar and with the Misty Terrain up on the field at the minute and it disappears so this the Amoongus becoming so threatening right away we're gonna see a foul play big 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 play there but the Flare Blitz Pinko targeting down that Amoongus perfectly able to pick up the knockout there's so Moonblast now able to pick up the Incineroar and the Uveltal coming in against this Dustman across me. You've got to feel like things are against the wall for Pinko here. He's done so well and what a heated match we've had for this game one. But Luigi picking up the first win there as we jump straight into game two. Pinko changing things up now. Going with that Ludicolo Kyogre lead. Bringing the rain and having that super fast swift swim Ludicolo to take advantage of. Going to see Uveltal and Tipu Fini on Luigi's side as the Ludi switches out straight away turn one. To get rid of that Misty terrain. Bring the Psychic terrain. Four. Pinker onto the field as a Moongus comes out for Evaltal and a Thunder coming out from the Kyogre into the Tapu Fini. Not picking up the Paralysis but a Nature's Madness coming out and return to the Kyogre. Kyogre now going to switch out. Ludicolo going to hit the field as a Rage Powder comes out from this Moongus. Is it going to take a Psy Shock? It is in Psychic Terrain and going to be more than enough to pick up the knockout here as we're going to see the Tapu Fini now on Luigi's side go for that Icy Wind. Slowing everything down, getting himself into a better position for that. Xerneas now coming in to to hit the field gonna go for that geomancy boost you've got to imagine so cannot take advantage of the fake out either in the psychic terrain taking full advantage of this getting these boosts onto the zone we saw how much work it did last game can it do the same this game and we are going to see this time a water mz it is going to be from the ludicolo but because of that icy wind it doesn't get the jump on the zernius unfortunately and it is going to be into that slot after the geomancy still doing big damage but again that Tapu Fini just there with the heal pulse undoing all of that great work but the Psy Shock this time without the Snarl support doing big damage so very threatening to the e Xerneas as the Tapu Fini switches out for the Uvalto. Dazzling Gleam going to come out into both these Pokemon. The Hydro Pump coming out from the Ludi after it survives the Dazzling Gleam picking up the knockout and taking it out. Now, Pinko back on the field with his Kyogre Ludicolo as a Thunder comes out this time, revealing the Scarf on the Kyogre, picking up the knockout onto the Tapu Fini. What's this Veltal going to do? But it is going to take an Ice Beam first. Can we see a Freeze? No, just a Snarl coming out. Going to pick up the knockout onto the Ludi. Do some nice chip damage to that Kyogre and reduce its special attack as Dustman Necrozma comes out onto the field. The Thunder coming out and it misses because it's not in the rain. The foul play not enough to pick up the knockout. Unfortunately, as the Sunseal Strike comes out from this Dustman Necrozma, it does take the foul play and it does do big damage. You've got to think if that Thunder hit here, it would be all over, but it does miss again. Pinko, this is heartbreaking, able to take out the Dustman Necrozma with 
the foul play and the thunder again coming out this time hitting but the sucker punch going to be too much for Luigi and able to pick up the knockout massive games there and congratulations to both players what an absolutely phenomenal set that we had there crazy set and it could have gone either way the thunders out of the rain last turns were just really unfortunate but what a great way to uh, get into the latter parts of this episode I'm going to move on now to our next match which is Magi versus Preston Hectic V GC. We're going to see Imagi on the bottom of the screen. We're moving over to Showdown. Unfortunately, these players who are featuring next could not play on card. So, and um, some of the matches that we will feature in this review episode will be on Showdown, but that is fine. And we'll just jump into game one. We're going to see Imagi lead off with Tornadus and Xerneas, and Preston lead off with the Eveltal and Amoongus. We're going to see a huge Z move turn one from this Tornadus, taking out the Amoongus as a snarl comes out from the Eveltal on Preston's side. Type of Finny now coming in, but it is taunted and able to do anything. You're going to see a Moonblast into that Eveltal as a Tailwind setup, Dazzling Beam coming out. Icy Wind trying to disrupt, reduce that Tailwind support there, but this Xerneas on Imagi's side is all set up now. That turn one Z move taking Preston right by surprise and taking it down and uh, really leaving him no options to come back from now we're going into game two as we see the um, the same leads from Magi as Preston leads off with his Xerneas this time Tapu Fini coming in for the Amoongus here just wanted to take that Z move as both Xerneas set up the Geomancies we are going to see a Moonblast take down that Tornado Sister and Helping Hand come out from the Serena it is going to boost that Xerneas but able to take it as Preston is able to get rid of this Geomancy boost with these Amoongus take advantage of that the Kyogre now hitting the field as Xerneas does protect just stalling out these tailwind turns on that side of the field as the Xerneas to protect Kyogre are going to take huge damage return with an origin pulse but that heal pulse again showing how big that can be and tying the game up for hectic VGC press and bring this back to 1-1 as we're going into game 3 who will come out victorious here we're going to see the same leads from Imagi and the same leads from Preston he is going to protect the Xerneas turn 1 water spout and then the z move doubling into that type of thingy that is enough to take it down we are going to see the eveltal come in now xerneas not wanting to sit on the field and get taunted so gonna be switching out for the amoongus the amoongus coming in taking the damage from the xerneas on imagine side of the field but not wanting to go for that geomancy as long as that amoongus is out but predicting the switch gonna switch out and we're gonna see the geomancy so and the tailwind set up there's a the moonblast into the opposing xerneas a snarl coming out from this eveltal able to lower its health down to minus one as the taunt comes out into this opposing Xerneas. Dazzling Gleam gonna come out. This is gonna be a close one. And Preston making the big play, switching his Geomancy Xerneas out for Rivalto. Big, big play here as a Moonblast coming into it. And now you've got to think, imagine you've got through these turns, gonna be able to survive and pick up the win with this Cartana, which is doing so much work from now as the Clear Smog does eventually pick up the Xerneas. But Kyogre coming in for a Magi and gonna be able to win the game for him, taking the set 2 1. What a heated match to kick us off today. And we are gonna finish up this final week with one of my favorite matches from this week and that is going to be Johnny Hacks and Zenith. Infernip and Sogaleo come out for Zenith and the Melotic and Rayquaza for Johnny. We're going to see the fake out there into the Protect and a big Gigavolt Havoc from the Sogaleo turn one taking out that Melotic. Huge play here as we see the Incineroar come in with that fake out support and a Dragon Dance from the Rayquaza. Now the Z move and Supersonic Sky Strike into that type of thing. You're going to be able to pick up the knockout. Huge play there and uh, Johnny able to do this this, like taking the attacks and this Rayquaza just going crazy now with these Dragon Dance boosts as we see the Silver Layer concentrating down on the Incineroar slot here a little bit more as Tailwind comes out from the Cartana setting up late game with the Heat Wave coming out from this Togetic going to be able to take the Cartana down to its Sash as a Sacred Sword and a Flare Blitz going to be enough to take down that Silver Layer now big big turn there for Johnny as he doubles up onto this lonely Togetic and taking the game one there so we're going to go on to game two Fennip, Groudon coming out for Zenith as we see Johnny lead with that Amoongus uh, switching straight into the Xerneas. Going to take a Precipice Blades on the way in as we see the Finny switch out for Groudon. See Infernip take out the Xerneas here and Rayquaza are going to come in again and be able to set up that Dragon Dance knowing how threatening it is. It is going to be able to just extreme speed the Infernip as it does U-turn out taking damage and going to the Silver Layer 
the Super Sonic Sky Strike from the Rayquaza are going to be able to take down the Groudon, paving the way for this Rayquaza to do so much work to see Sensor Strike into the Incineroar and a haze come out from the Tapu Fini. We're going to see it's another Sensor Strike into this Incineroar. This Solveleo is missing the Super Pass so much here. To see another Sensor Strike and does get the burn, which is really unfortunate for Zenith as that is enough for him to just take the game and pave the way so we can see the leaderboard here guys i'm just going to say great game to all players this week but um as we can see we've had some incredible matches and we've got all ties at the top of the leaderboard this week we've got johnny nigel worms eye will your luigi stew maggi all and alex all picking up wins going into week one all tied on three points uh, we have got some win differences that are making the difference here for some players but for the most part we have got a great week then we've got pokemon picking up one point because of that two one loss hectic again pressed in there with the same and shared with that two one loss and then pinko your um, J, Krim, Bebem and Zenith all on zero points but ready to get off the mark next week and I can't wait to see what teams they bring. It's been absolutely amazing going into this week so I can't wait to see how things are going to shape up going into week two matches. So guys, I hope you have enjoyed this week's review episode. It's been a bit crazy, a bit frantic. I've had to speed up the actual battles and hopefully commentary over the top wasn't too hectic. Please let me know what you think of the matches in the commentary. If you want me to split them up and do them over two episodes, that'd be much easier. Then let me have a bit more room to maybe talk about the battles and things like that. But hopefully this works and hopefully you've enjoyed it just a massive congratulations to all players it's been crazy we've seen some mad things and i'm still kind of absolving them as we're going into the end of this episode as always do leave a like and leave your comments down below make sure that you do subscribe to the channel and if you want to keep up to date with the moon series make sure you are following this so you can possibly enter and join in, in the ultra series and join these guys and pit your wits against them for that ultra series it'll be starting very soon so we'll be back with another episode next week guys thank you so much for tuning in and take care and until the next one bye bye